All right, Ronan and MMA, welcome back to the channel. Now, on yesterday's episode of the MMA Hour with Ariel Hawani, guys spent a pretty good chunk of time talking about some of the verbal altercations that took place during UFC 297's fight week, okay? He talked about the altercation between Sean Strickland and that journalist Alexander Cayley. He talked about some of Dana White's post-fight press conference statements and things like that. And honestly, dude, as much as I hate Ariel Hawani, if you go look at every single video I've ever done on him, it's never positive. I'm always calling him out for something. I have to admit here, he did make a few good points, and he actually kind of exposes Dana White for canceling people in the past over things that they have said. Now, I'm going to go over all of that because I do think there was a little bit of context left out. We're going to be doing that later in the video, but I first want to cover them in order, in the order that he spoke about them. So we're going to talk about the Alexander Cayley situation. I'm going to listen to his thoughts, and I'll give my thoughts on his thoughts and thoughts inception and things like that, dude. So I'm going to play the first clip for you guys, and then we will get to it. The idea that he was baiting him is completely ludicrous, and I'll explain why. Number one, he's asking him a question about something that he said. So he just wanted to know, do you still feel this way? Baiting someone is you're trying to twist their words, you're trying to catch them, you're trying to trip them up. It was just a simple, like, you said this, do you still believe this way? That to me isn't baiting. That's just asking if, all right, you've changed as a person, you've evolved, you've been wearing that t-shirt. You're asking for questions that are non-fight related. In fact, I think he relishes the non-fight related questions because it allows him to be on the front foot and kind of turn the tables and then start, you know, waxing poetic about other things. You show up with a t-shirt that literally starts talking about women in the kitchen and a gun in your hand. You are asking for non-fight related questions, in my opinion. So I don't think there was any baiting going on. When you're showing, if you're showing up with a, you know, tap out shirt, if you're showing up with a UFC Venom shirt and hey, I'm just here to talk about fights and you start asking about that, then yeah. But we know that's not Sean Strickland. We know that that's not really what he wants to talk about and he is showing up with a t-shirt that is in All right, now the first point that he tries to make up I completely 100% disagree with is that Alexander Kaylee was not baiting Sean Strickland. Now his reason for this is that well, he didn't twist any of his words. He didn't do anything like that. No no tricky gotcha questions. Was simply quoting Sean Strickland and asking him whether or not he still believes this. I call bullshit one. I don't think any of those things that he mentioned are necessary nor sufficient to be participating in trying to bait someone, okay? To me, baiting somebody is you're trying to elicit a certain response out of somebody. Doesn't really matter what the subject matter is. Doesn't really matter if you quote them properly or not. You know, essentially, you're asking a question you know the answer to. And if anybody pays attention to the sport at all, we basically know Sean Strickland's opinions on fucking everything. He might be the most transparent fighter on the roster. He's got no filter whatsoever, sometimes to his own detriment. His opinions and thoughts on everything are basically out there for the world to see. As I said, one of the most transparent, outspoken fighters on the roster. So in my opinion, Alexander Cayley absolutely fucking knew what he was going to get from Sean Strickland, and he did it anyways. Do you know what I mean? And I think that that was his intention, right? He wanted a clip that would go viral. Now, Second part, honestly, I kind of agree with, okay, is that Sean Strickland was not caught off guard. So if anybody is saying that, you should stop because I think that's stupid. He was not. I've never said that. And I haven't really heard a whole lot of people saying that. Sean Strickland walked into that media day scrum willingly and, and knowingly. He was engaging in political banter and he fucking knew it, dude. Not just because of the shirt. Forget all that. Every Canadian journalist this guy engaged with, he asked them, he basically started off every single time. Who did you vote for? right? Because he wanted to know whether or not they had voted for Trudeau. And then he was going to call them out for the freezing of bank accounts during the trucker protests and things like that, which I applaud him for. And I greatly appreciate it. But he wasn't caught off guard, right? He wanted to engage in this kind of discussion. So I've not said that throughout the week when I covered this topic in multiple videos. I haven't really heard anybody saying it. But if you are, it's not fucking true. He knew what was coming and he wanted it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. But I'm going to play the next clip for you guys and then we will talk about it after that. Intense afterwards that I feel like it was used as an opportunity to stick it to the woke media, stick it to everyone. And some people got really fired up over this. Some people got really mad over it. And it's usually the people who are crying about, you know, the media trying to cancel others who are then trying to instill those same kinds of restrictions and beliefs on the media, right? Oh, let's stick to the media. Let's cancel the media now. And I don't think Alex was trying to, I personally don't think he was trying to cancel um, Sean or get him in trouble or anything like that. I think he really just wanted to know, okay, do you still believe this? And perhaps if so, why? And then we can move on. But this was kind of used as this weapon to show the, you know, the rest of the world, like, look what they're trying to do to Sean Strickland in Canada. All right. Now this next point for me from Helwani is absolute and total fucking bullshit. This is the easiest thing to disagree with that he said throughout this whole segment because it's just factually incorrect. Alexander K. Lee absolutely wanted Sean Strickland to get in trouble and we know this, okay? I covered this and as I said, multiple videos throughout fight week, he was reposting, retweeting, whatever, dude. 
boosting the signal of people that were openly advocating for the cancellation of Sean Strickland. Cancellation, okay? Meaning they wanted him suspended and ineligible to compete at UFC 297. They wanted him fined. Some people even wanted him banned from competing in the UFC. Fuck this event ever. Do you know what I mean? Alexander K. Lee was retweeting, reposting, signal boosting these sentiments. So he may not have said those words himself, but what the fuck do you think he's doing when he's retweeting somebody that says Sean Strickland should be suspended and fined? What do you think he's doing when he reposts a clip from the Dan Lebitard show and Michael fucking whatever his name is, Ruiz, dude's crying over the shit Sean Strickland says almost, advocating for suspension, fining, said this would happen in the NBA, this would happen in the NFL, why the fuck isn't it happening here? Says he even went as far as to go and speak with somebody that works at ESPN to ask him, what kind of gonads are you gonna show me here? What are you gonna do about this shit? As he's like fucking tearing up, okay? And as I said, Alexander Kaylee reposted these. He was boosting the signal of people saying, Sean Strickland should be punished. He should be fined, suspended, barred from competition, in general. So for Helwani, for, uh, Helwani to say, well, I don't personally believe he wanted him to get in trouble. Utter fucking horseshit. And he knows it. And I don't think he believes what he just said because he even earlier on in the segment, I didn't include this bit because I didn't find it relevant until I just went to go fucking speak about it now. He says, I was pretty active on Twitter throughout this whole time. I was getting people pretty mad at me on Twitter and things like this. So presumably he would have seen the tweets, the reposts, whatever from his fucking colleague in Alexander K. Lee, right? They work at the same outlet. He obviously follows the guy on Twitter. He was aware of the altercation. He was aware of some of the things that were being said. There's no way he didn't see, see him reposting, signal boosting, people advocating for Sean Strickland to be suspended, fined, and whatever else, okay? So this one from Helwani is a little bit bullshit, but we're gonna move on to the next clip and I'll talk about it on the other side. Actually, one last point on that last clip that we watched there. I just, I don't wanna forget this, okay? He says that oftentimes the people that are whining and complaining, crying about the woke media trying to cancel people oftentimes want the media to be canceled themselves or will advocate for such. Fucking horseshit. I haven't seen anybody do that. If you are doing that, stop. That's fucking stupid, okay? You need to be consistent in your values. If it's free speech for people you agree with, it has to be free speech with people you disagree with also, okay? I've not, I've not for one advocated for that in any of the videos. I've done on this subject. I haven't really seen anybody of significant relevance saying things like that. You know, I don't like that the guy asked the question in the way that he did, but fucking whatever, dude. And, and you know, on that same token, I do kind of like that he did it because we got to see what an absolute total cunt he was and the way Sean Strickland handled it, while may have been a bit of a PR nightmare, maybe, I loved it. And I think a lot of other people did too. So just wanted to point that out. Don't advocate for somebody like Alexander Kaylee to be canceled. We want these people to be loud and outspoken about their retarded fucking beliefs so that we know who they are, we know what they think, and we know how to counter them, okay? So anyways, I'll play the next clip for you guys. Why? 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 Well, I would say this to my fellow media members. Why are you looking to Sean Strickland as some kind of moral compass? Why do you care what he thinks about any of this stuff when you could say you already know how he feels about this? He's made his feelings and beliefs quite clear. If you want to say, like, I want to know more, I want to dig more, I want to... Sure, but I would say myself, the reason why I don't want to talk to him about this, the reason why I don't want to have Bryce Mitchell on to talk about this, the reason why I don't want to have Sean Strickland to talk about this or any of these people, why I try to stay away from all this stuff, why I wanted to have Colby Covington on the show back at ESPN when they would tell me not to have him on and not talk to him about politics is because I don't care. You, know, you could just look to these people as fighters, uh, try your best to see the good in them, uh, which was, you know, for the most part, what I try to do and not view any opportunity to speak to them, especially in a sort of public setting, and you're not one-on-one -on -one where you can really kind of go back and forth and dig deep, as any opportunity to get to the bottom of all this. We're I know, honestly, I kind of like this point from Helwani too, which is crazy. I, well, I didn't like the other points, but I do kind of like this one. Again, in the interest of fairness, okay? Why the fuck do you care? Why do you care what Sean Strickland thinks? Why do you care what Bryce Mitchell thinks? Why do you care what Colby Covington thinks at all? And why are you at a media scrum, trying to figure it all out, trying to flesh all these ideas out. Like Helwani said, dude, you're at a media scrum, not really the time or the place. Now he doesn't, he's not saying it as like fucking adamantly as I am, but he did a little earlier on. He's like, you know, I wouldn't ask these kinds of questions here. You've got three questions with the guy and you know, you just don't have the time to get into an in-depth discussion like that. You don't have the time to have a back and forth, like a healthy discussion. Do you know what I mean? There's like five other fucking journalists waiting to ask questions, you've only got a couple, and you waste them on that bullshit. However, to be fair, mission accomplished, because like I said earlier, he was looking for a clip that would go viral, he got just that, 
but this was one part that I did kind of like from Helwani. Why do you fucking care what these guys think? Do you know what I mean? Just move on. Move on. Who cares? Which I love. Anyways, dude, I'll play the next clip and then we will talk about it. Where it gets interesting is when Dana White starts talking about it because Dana White has, has, has found this amazing he's found this amazing sort of role in the world of sports and in society right now as the lone, as people like to call him commissioner or owner or head of sport who doesn't listen to the media and doesn't, doesn't cower to the critics and doesn't bow down to the, the, the woke culture out there. He has found this lane as the, the, the head of the uncancelable sport. Uh, this is where you come to say what's on your mind, to shoot from the hip, and, and, and there aren't going to be any sort of repercussions whatsoever. And he leans into this. And I would argue that he has really leaned into this since 2016. All right, now this next clip is the beginning of... Helwani exposing Dana White for the cancellation of multiple people. Now, I didn't play the parts where he reads them all out. I'm going to read those out for you. I just wanted to play the intro so you kind of knew what was about to be talked about, what the context was and things like that, right? He's talking about how Dana White has become this figure where it's like, fuck the woke, fuck these people. We're not going to let anybody cancel us. You can say whatever the fuck you want here. You're safe, all this shit, blah, 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 blah. And he's right. That is what it is now, right? But he does point out it wasn't really this way pre 2016 and i do want to touch on why i think that is in a little bit but first i am going to go over some of the instances that dana white did participate in the very thing that he hates now which i'll you know i'm a little mixed on this so i fucking hate it right obviously i hate that he did it i hate that guys were suspended or punished for things that they said that being said though i'm perfectly fine with people changing their minds do you know what I mean? As a matter of fact, I would encourage it. If you're somebody that's anti-free speech or you want people to be punished for saying things that they believe in, you should change your mind because that's fucking stupid. Do you know what I mean? So whether or not Dana White changed his mind, which I don't really think that's what it was. I think there's something a little more there. Um, it, I do. I hate it still. But as I said, he's different now. He's changed his mind. The last instance of this happening was a good long while ago. And again, I'm going to talk about why, but let's go over these one by one. So the first one is Loretta Hunt, okay? Some blog writer, right? She wrote a wrote a blog about um, how managers weren't going to be allowed in the back anymore and things like that. And I guess people obviously had to speak to her to give her this information. Dana White wasn't all that happy about the people that spoke to her. And while going on a rant about it, he used a naughty word, okay? He used a naughty word and then he apologized for it, which Helwani, even in his segment, to be fair, points out this isn't really, you know, punishing other people. This is him kind of censoring himself, him policing his own speech, which isn't really what we're after here. But he just wanted to point it out for context. And look, I think it's fine to police your own speech. I don't necessarily think you should. But if you feel the need that you want to, fucking have at it. I just don't want you to police my speech or anybody else's speech. Do you know what I mean? So this instance, not necessarily all that damning. The next ones, though, are not great. So then in 2010, Frank Mir um, was commentating for, I believe it was a WE, uh, WEC event, a smaller organization that was still owned by Zufa um, at the time. And he said on air, it might have even not been WEC, it might have been a smaller one, but either way, he wanted Brock Lesnar to be the first person that dies in the octagon, okay? He got fired from his commentary job, and he was forced to give an apology. And as I said, the promotion that he was commentating for was owned by Zufa, owned by Dana White, essentially, and the Fertitta brothers. So they obviously pressured him or forced him to make a public statement about it. They fired him from his job and things like that, right? Not fucking great, dude, because Sean Strickland said, said shit like this. Conor McGregor is threatened to kill. Like, we've heard guy, we we hear guys say this shit all the time now. So it's crazy to think that 14 years ago, dudes were losing their jobs over it. But either way, dude, let's move on to the next one. 2011, Forrest Griffin forced to apologize for a grape joke. Okay, you know what the fuck I mean. He had to make a donation. He had to do some meeting with some fucking foundation and all this weird shit, right? It, weird, okay? 2011, again, Miguel Torres got cut from the UFC for another naughty word, right? Dana White did a pretty a statement on this, actually. I think he might have been interviewed by Helwani himself talking about how, yeah, Miguel Torres is one of the best in the world, blah, 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 blah. But I just fired him for this shit, right? So, crazy. Uh, the next one, 2013. Matt Mitrione forced to apologize for talking shit about Fallon Fox, which was 100% fucking warranted. 100% warranted. A person that lied about being a female, that was not a female, that went and fought females that didn't know. Do you know what I mean? And injured them. Like, it's fucking disgusting and horrible. He was suspended, and the UFC made a statement 
Quote, UFC is a friend and ally of the LGBTQ community. Uh, bro, I don't know what's happening to my voice. <clears throat> the UFC is a friend and ally of the LGBT community. Ugh, cringe. What the fuck, Dana? Moving on. 2013, Nate Diaz suspended for using a naughty word. Again, seems to be a theme here, okay? 2015, Yoel Romero's in the, uh, no forget Jesus part. Dana ripped you all apart, uh, talking about religion and says religion and politics should be left out of fighting and all that shit, okay? Now I'll admit, these are damning and I fucking hate them. And they're very good points. They were good to bring up by Ariel Helwani, who's trying to argue the other side of things. As I said earlier though, people's views and opinions are allowed to change on issues like this. And I think that they should, okay? Also, something that in my opinion could have changed because, you know, Helwani went as far back as 2009 here, pulling these uh, examples up, right? If there were any more modern ones, you know for a fact he would have fucking included them, okay? Last one was 2015, as I said. In 2016, the company sold for like $4.2 billion, right? From 2009 and onwards, those years in between, UFC, MMA in general, was not mainstream. It was hated on by the mainstream. It was never going to... At the time, people thought it would never be viewed as a real legitimate sport. And I believe that they were trying to keep their image as squeaky clean as they possibly could to get in the door. Do you know what I mean? You got to get in the door first and then you can fucking fuck shit up, which is kind of what they did. So while you could view that as like selling out in a sense, and honestly, it kind of is, right? You're, you're changing your values for the ability to make money. Um, I, for one, am glad that he did that because now we get the UFC as big as it is. Um, but now that it is as big as it is, it, and it's not going anywhere, we kind of know what his actual stance is, right? And uh, not just the part about trying to make the UFC or MMA in general more mainstream, trying to erase some of the stigmas about mixed martial arts being some savage fucking horrible thing that should not be considered a real sport and all of that shit. I feel like during these years, Cancel culture was a little less prevalent, in my opinion, right? Or at the very least, in public, it was a little less prevalent. People that had something to do with the business might take action, but people outside wouldn't necessarily, which I feel like today, when you're somebody like Dana White, if if my fighter does something stupid and I want to punish him for it, I'm going to fucking punish him for it. But if Bud Light or or Monster or what have you calls Dana and is like, you need to do this shit. He's the kind of guy that would be like, no, fuck you. Just because they told him to. Do you know what I mean? So back then, I feel as though it was a little more uh, like a, of a personal decision on Dana White's part rather than pressure from the outside, which today is what happens pretty harshly, right? And I feel like that's why there's so much pushback now. Thankfully, uh, people are beginning to push back is because like, fuck you, don't, I'm not, like, you're not going to tell me what to do. Do you know what I mean? As I said, if I want to handle it internally in my own company, I will. But you're not going to tell me how to fucking handle it. Do you know what I mean? So I think those are a few reasons. I'm not I'm not trying to defend any of these suspensions. I would have much rather none of them happened, right? But it is what it is. They did happen. As I said, last instance of this, which wasn't even a suspension, Yoel Romero didn't get suspended, was 2015. We're talking almost a decade ago. And I feel it's pretty clear what the company's stance on things is now. So that's that's my take on that. But um, but anyways, dude, I'm going to play the last couple clips for you guys, and then we will talk about them after that. To remind you all and teach you all once and for all so we don't talk about this, and I don't talk about this shit. I don't talk about politics. I don't care. In fact, I love when I see people in my comments calling me woke, beta, uh, lib, this, that. As I've said again and again, my whole family, they're conservative. They all vote Republican, whether it's in Canada or the U.S. I probably feel a lot more like a lot of you about quote-unquote woke culture than, uh, than you may think. I mean, you know what I support, you know that I back Israel, you know that I've seen heinous things being said about my people and country over the last three months. Just think twice when you say the stuff that you say online. Nevertheless, just, I, I heard people on uh, Saturday, and again, I know this will confuse some people, people were, were saying F Justin Trudeau at the event. Oh my God, could you believe that? I hate Justin Trudeau. I think he's one of the worst prime ministers in the history of my country. Uh, he has not been a great prime minister. He hasn't been an ally for my people. I'm not a fan. I would never vote for him if I lived in Canada. And so I'm, I'm, I'm not sitting there do I think that that type of stuff should be said at a UFC event? No, I think it's a little weird. I don't know how we got to this point, but it's not like I'm trying to defend or I'm upset with this or that. I'm just trying to explain to all of you, the same minded people out there, that it wasn't always this way. All right, now this last clip, I was actually very torn on and I was like, what the fuck? Because Ariel Hawani expresses his hatred for Justin Trudeau, which I very much appreciate and I would have not 
expected from a guy like Ariel Helwani. So fair enough. Okay. Fair enough. But he then goes on to like kind of feign ignorance as to, well, I don't know how we got here. I don't know how we got to this point. Why, why did things come so political? The, the, what I talked about in the last clip, like the outside pressure, people pushing you, trying to tell you what you need to think, what you need to believe and what you need to do is why things have become so political. When you have governments around the world shutting down their countries for years over something that was not very deadly, okay, not very dangerous at all, taking extreme measures to do so, right, trying to shut down businesses, and then you've got Dana White who kept shit going throughout the entire time, the entire time. I think they took a month off and then they got right back to it. And during that time, you had people, mainstream media members that cover the sport that if not for Dana White would have lost their fucking job, would have been making no money throughout those entire, those three years were shitting on him relentlessly talking about how irresponsible, how dangerous this is. I don't know why he's doing this. He needs to stop. He needs to do what everybody else is doing and stop, right? We've gotten to this point because politics has become so fucking entrenched in everything and it can be very annoying, but pre 2020, I feel like a lot of people didn't give a shit about politics because nobody ever really felt like it affected them personally or directly, right? Whereas in 2020 and onwards, almost every decision made by every fucking government affected each one of those citizens differently, right? And in terms of whether or not you were able to work, in terms of whether or not you were able to go into a restaurant, a grocery store, a f what have you, right? All of these things actually directly affected you. And I feel like pre-2020, that wasn't necessarily a thing, right? If you were somebody that paid attention, maybe, um, and maybe you'd feel it a little bit more just because it's always there in your mind, you're thinking about it. But pre-2020, I didn't really think about this shit. And then it happens and you're like, oh, Jesus Christ, this is a fucking problem. Do you know what I mean? Because it's affecting me directly now and I'm able to see it. Uh, so I, th I feel like that's why. And I feel like he kind of knows that, right? Things didn't just get this way from out of nowhere. They got this way because one side pushes way, 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 way too hard, way too far. And then finally they're receiving some pushback. And as I said, I feel like people are fucking traumatized from those three years, especially if you live somewhere like the country I do, or, you know, other countries that behaved similarly to us. So I thought it was a little city, uh, silly of him to, to, to kind of feign ignorance as to why politics is all of a sudden so prevalent in sports like this. But um, I do appreciate that he hates Justin Trudeau, so that's a fucking weird one, eh? Weird one, dude. I'm torn on that. I hate Ariel Hawani, but I'm glad that he hates Justin Trudeau. Um, anyways, dude, like and subscribe. I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you at the next video. Bye-bye.